Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Scary Stories, with your host, the Creepy Fox. Tonight, join me for over an hour of true scary stories that are going to chill you all to the bone. Some of the stories I'll be covering today include scary home alone stories, encounters with burglars and robbers, and even the first story we're covering, one about a school lockdown. Now, I just wanted to quickly remind you guys, if you haven't already done so, Make sure you've clicked the bell next to the subscribe button on my channel. Make sure you have it set from personalized notifications to all notifications. I've been getting a lot of people asking me why they haven't been seeing my videos in their feeds. It's because it's normally set to personalized. So make sure you have it set to receive all notifications. I've got a lot of awesome videos coming up and I don't want you guys missing them. But anyways friends, let's get started with the scary stories. Our school went on lockdown. Hello, Creepy Fox. I've been listening to your stories for around two years now. I saw you needed stories, and I knew of one that I've never submitted before. So, it was third period study hall. I recall I was on my Chromebook, minding my own business, when suddenly, the dean came over the loudspeaker. Hello, we're going into lockdown in place. Please stay calm and go to the nearest classroom. Now, this was weird because normally our dean will tell us it's for a medical emergency or something along those lines, but nothing. Had something happened he didn't want to share, we weren't sure. But about 15 minutes pass and we're just chilling on the Chromebook until my classmate says, Hey Ryan, you see that van out there? I ended up looking and there's a big black Mercedes-like van that Amazon drivers would deliver in, but this was far from an Amazon driver. Nothing ended up happening, until my friend screams, Oh God! All we heard were two sets of gunshots and a car booking it. About an hour later, the dean comes back on the loudspeaker and gives us a brief statement that the lockdown is over and we can go home. Later that day, walking home, my friend said his teacher told him that a man in black clothing took two shots at a classroom window and booked it. I don't think the man was caught, but I still wonder, was the man there for revenge, or was he there for another intent? We still don't know, even all these years later. Lost in LA This took place in 2005, when I was 24 years old and it's perhaps one of the most scariest things I have ever been through. Nowadays, hearing these sorts of mishaps are more on the rare side, considering my experience has to do with getting lost. That's already scary in itself. Add on top an encounter like mine, and you're just asking for everlasting nightmares. Anyways, at the time, my sister, being a sophomore in high school, was part of a community service group known as Circle K, Maybe some of you out there know about it, or have even volunteered at one point in your life. But nonetheless, this one weekend, her club was having a convention at a Marriott Hotel in LA. It was supposed to be this really big event where members were going to get recognized, along with receiving certificates, medals, and prizes for their hard work. Now, the thing was that my sister still didn't know how to drive, and we lived in Orange County, near Disneyland. That meant someone would have to drive her to the Marriott Hotel. I was stuck with the task of driving my sister since my parents were away for that weekend on their wedding anniversary. So around 6pm on a Friday, we make the almost hour drive to the Marriott Hotel, and I drop off my sister, being asked to stay so that I could join the club for dinner. After food, close to 8pm, I finally wish my sister a good weekend and get into my car and start driving back home. This is the point in the story, when things were about to take a turn for the worst. About 10 minutes on the freeway, I hear my cell phone ring. It was my sister, asking me if her laptop was in the back seat. I take one quick look, and sure enough, there it is, lying on top of her sweater. I actually need that laptop. Uh, I'm supposed to do a PowerPoint presentation tomorrow morning. Could you swing by and bring it to me? I remember letting out an annoyed sigh, but agreeing to make a quick turnaround and head back to the Marriott. After all, the last thing you want is to let down an entire group of people. 
So I go ahead and look for the nearest exit, and I get lost almost immediately. For whatever reason, finding the entrance to the on-ramp was almost impossible. It also didn't help that I had gotten off in a really ghetto and shady area of LA County. You could see a bunch of trash on the streets, graffiti, and I even recall seeing some police yellow caution tape across a building with what looked to be like small holes from bullets. Super scary. Now, instead of going around in circles like a complete idiot, I spotted a Chevron gas station and pulled up to a couple of guys who were talking next to their truck. The stare, as well as the body language they gave me, was something like, Boy, you better get out of here real quick, or you're about to get clapped. Funny enough, they were pretty rude to me, but they managed to give me some direction, saying I just needed to make a right turn after three streets, and I'll see the on-ramp. So, now I make my way in the direction I'm told, and I get another call from my sister, basically asking me where I was and what was taking so long. I give her the scoop, but in this minute conversation, I miss my turn, like an idiot yet again, and drive into a neighborhood. This was a big mistake, as I stumbled upon a group of people sitting on top of the hoods of some low riders. Almost immediately, a couple of the guys, I counted about ten in total, reached into their pockets and took out pistols. I remember going numb as I can hear my heartbeat begin to drum louder and faster than the little engine that could. Meanwhile my palms are sweating profusely. I noped out of there so fast that I don't even recall what they said to me. It was in Spanish, but from the little I understood and remember, I think they wanted me to step out of the vehicle. Either way, I backed up, did a quick 180 before they could catch up to me, and finally located the entrance to the freeway. I never looked back, and finally, I made it to my sister in one piece. Fast forward to today, and thank goodness GPS is a thing. It's so easy to take out your phone and get directions. Even if you make a wrong turn, the app will update you, meaning getting lost is almost non-existent. So, that was the time I got lost in LA, and as they say, almost got clapped by a misunderstanding. Creepy Guys in Alleyway When I was in college, I'm female by the way, I was part of an undergraduate program that allowed me to conduct research at a lab in Panama. I don't want to go into too much detail. But I was going to be in Panama for the summer in the rainforest, collecting and analyzing samples. All of my lab mates and I have been working hard for a couple of months and we all decided to take some time off and explore Panama City. My roommate and I shared a love of shopping. She was from China, and although sometimes there was a language barrier, we got along really well. Her and I decided to go to a mall on our own while our lab mates, who were mostly guys, decided to go elsewhere. Breaking off from that group was not the best idea. While I did speak Spanish and I could navigate, my friend slash roommate could not. We struck out on our own. Not ten minutes later, we find ourselves taking a shortcut down an alleyway in the middle of Panama City. Out of nowhere, a pickup truck filled with guys turned down the alleyway behind us. So we moved to the side so they could pass us. They pulled up right next to us, slowing down to our walking pace, and started saying greetings. I smiled and timidly waved at them, hoping that they would soon drive away because something about the situation felt wrong. The men suddenly sped up to the end of the alleyway, and then turned around and started driving back slowly. They were saying some not-so-nice things now, commenting on how our bodies looked. My poor roommate could tell that their demeanor had changed, and she asked me what they were saying. I told her it wasn't good, and that we needed to get out of the situation, now. Luckily, just before the truck reached us again, there was another side street that we ducked into, and there were several people walking down that street. We ended up hurrying away, and we glanced back just in time to see the truck with the creep stop at the entrance of the street we had just gone down. They were visibly angry, but luckily they just sped off. My roommate and I breathed a sigh of relief 
and we vowed never again to take any more alleyways. As for the rest of the trip, it went without any more problems, and I highly recommend visiting Panama City, Panama if you can. Just avoid the alleyways. I stumbled into a home intruder. This is an incident in which I hope none of you who are listening ever have to go through this. I don't even wish it upon my worst enemies. It's that bad. Here's what took place. It was four years ago, summer vacation, roughly 7 p.m., and I was home alone playing video games. I recall it was still easily over 100 degrees as I had my AC blasting, munching on some Cheetos. I was playing with my friend Robert on Xbox Live, who lives just a few blocks from me, and all of a sudden, my power went out. At first I thought it might have been just my home and my circuit breaker, but after testing the power, I got the confirmation from a neighbor that it was the whole block. Now anyone who's without AC in the summertime in Arizona knows just how bad it can become. I had no way of cooling off other than going to the supermarket or the mall. Unfortunately, I didn't have a car at the time, and I didn't feel like walking. That's where Robert comes in. I give him a call, seeing as he's texting me, asking what happened, and I tell him about the power issue. He says that the power was still working at his home, and he could come and pick me up. That way we could play video games at his house until the power got fixed. I agreed, and a few minutes later, Robert arrives in his Hummer. I proceeded to grab my house keys, lock the front door, and get into the car. Fast forward an hour later, my dad, who had just caught an off of work since he had to work overtime, tells me he's heading back home, but first he was going to stop to grab a pizza. He also responded to my text message about the electricity and says the power company sent him an automated text message advising him the power was back. I was happy, so I tell my dad I would head back home soon. Fast forward another 15 minutes later, and Robert drops me off at my home. Here's when things were about to get scary. It's now approaching 9pm and the sun is set for the day. One of the lights which was on before I left, but had shut off due to the power outage, was on in the kitchen. I almost didn't think too much of it, until I could have sworn I saw a shadow being cast through the curtains. I had to do a double take and walked over to the window just to go check, but I couldn't see anything. I cursed myself for being so paranoid and then step into my home, ignoring this alarm bell, which looking back at it now, was my only warning sign. Continuing on, I went to the kitchen to grab myself a Gatorade, and it's at this point when I heard something loud crashing from upstairs. That was immediately followed by footsteps. I went cold as I looked out the window, but I couldn't see my dad's vehicle. So what had caused the noise? Surely it wasn't the house settling to the temperature. Our home is old, but this was more than just a natural occurrence. It had now dawned on me that someone had broken into my home. 19-year-old me who thinks he's a tough shot decided to hatch a plan. I grabbed two of the largest and sharpest knives I could find, and then I start to make my way toward the staircase. As I'm about to place my foot on the first step, I looked up to the very top, and my eyes meet what is perhaps anyone's worst fear. A stranger, wearing all black clothing, with a mask covering the lower half of their face. I was expecting this guy to be armed, and to take me out right there and then in my very own home, but instead, I'm surprised at what he does. The small duffel bag he was carrying, which I later found out was filled with some of our electronics, is dropped on the carpet, and the man begins to explain he thought nobody was home. I guess that's the best he could come up with. He then apologizes and he says he's leaving, and I stood at a distance while I kept my eyes on him, knives ready to do some work, as he then walks out the front door. I then watched and followed him as he runs across the street and then disappears into the alleyway. What had just happened? I wasn't sure, but I called my dad, who says he's almost home. Meanwhile, 
I started to check all the doors and the windows. Bingo. My answer. The back door was unlocked and it had been left open slightly ajar. I started to think how in the world had I forgotten to close it, but then I remembered. When I went outside earlier during the power outage to check the circuit breaker and then came back in, I had forgotten to lock the door. How I couldn't forgive myself for being so dumb. Either way, my dad got back and we filed a police report. Nothing as of today, however, and no further reports of break-ins have happened in my neighborhood since. I get to save the day. While this might not be the scariest story, I thought it might be worth sharing anyways. For the sake of privacy, I'll refer to myself as Chris, and for the last five years I've been working at a 7-Eleven in Southern Oregon. Shout out to all the Oregon listeners. Nevertheless, one day a few years ago, I got a new co-worker who we're going to call Jill. And while regularly changing co-workers isn't a surprise at a 7-Eleven, Jill was pretty great. She was willing to do 12-hour shifts most wouldn't do, and she picked up the job rather quickly. One day, after a couple of months of her working there, she mentioned to me a guy she would see regularly in the early mornings who would seem to linger after only buying a coffee or a donut, and she was pretty uncomfortable with him. I wrote it off as another colorful 7-Eleven character, as we get a wide variety of interesting people to say the least and I just tell her not to worry about him. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, and someone had called on Jill's shift. So surprised, I get the responsibility to come and work with her. Oh well, I could use the money, and Jill was great to work with. So after the first few hours, everything seemed normal, just usual 7-Eleven things, coffee, donuts, and soda. But then he walked in. Yep, the guy Jill had told me about, and I recognized him. You see, he would come in regularly and just talk to himself and hang outside the store until he would get kicked out and would barely ever buy anything. Still though, I greeted him and continued my cleaning duties. But after about five minutes, Jill comes over to me and mentions that he seems to be following her around the store. Now let me get this straight. Lingering is one thing, but when you make my customers and coworkers uncomfortable, that's when I get impatient. So, I acknowledge your statement and proceed behind the counter, where I have a better view of the store. After helping a few customers, I notice the man in front of the donut case is just staring, but not at the donuts. It just so happens that adjacent to the donuts was our coffee bar, where Jill was refilling the pots, and he's staring at her with intensity. I'm not sure how to describe it, but it was like a lion staring down a gazelle before it attacks. Mind you. He's been in the store for at least 30 minutes and was obviously stalking Jill the whole time. Outraged, I approached the man from behind and in the loudest and most intimidating voice I could muster, I say, Hey buddy, can I help you find anything? See, I often have co-workers tell me I'm usually a teddy bear, but when I have to, I can get fairly intimidating in an instant. Well, like a child caught in a lie, he starts stuttering and finally said, Yeah, I was looking, I was looking for a donut I like. Really? For more than 10 minutes? Sure, pal. Anyway, I continued by saying, Okay, well you haven't bought a single item yet, so you need to leave, now. Clearly scared and caught off guard, he slowly makes his way outside, but not without giving Jill one last look and the creepiest smile I've ever seen, and he didn't even try to hide it. Having seen this, I firmly say, Okay, that's it. You're not welcome back in the store. And if you have a problem with that, we'll call the police and see what they think. He proceeds his way outside, swearing at me all the way through the parking lot. Jill, finally breathing a sigh of relief, walks up and thanks me profusely and gives me a hug. Fast forward again a few weeks later, and I hear from one of the officers that comes to my store that the same man was caught stalking a few other girls and following them home. Safe to say, I'm glad I kicked him out when I did, or Jill may not be so lucky. Oh, and a side note, Jill is now my wife, and we have two beautiful children together. 
Also, I do have other experiences I could share if you'd be interested. Thanks for listening. And again, keep up the great work. Creep at the Halloween Store Hey, I saw you needed stories for an upcoming video. And actually, I just had something happen to me last week I thought was worth sharing. Not sure if you're doing another Halloween episode. But if you are, you can include this one since it involves the theme. This is the second year in a row that I picked up a part-time job working for a Halloween store. I was working on a Sunday. This was on the 11th. And it was an hour before closing. It was me, my manager, and two other co-workers who were going to call Kevin and Ashley. I was at the back of the store stocking up some of the shelves with new candy and chocolate when I got approached by a man, mid-40s, average height and build. Hey, can you show me where the restroom is? He said as I got a whiff of alcohol from his breath. Sure, it's down the aisle on the left, I replied back as I continued my activity. Fast forward about 30 seconds later. Can I help you? I said in confusion. Meanwhile, the man just stood there, continuing to stare at me. What time do you get off of work, Misty? Mind if I get your number? Misty's not my real name, by the way. I'm just using it for this story. Also, I have a name tag on, which is why he knew my name. I'm sorry, but I'm not really allowed to give you that information, especially since I'm working. That's okay. I can wait until you get off of work. The guy couldn't take a hint. I told him I was busy and that if he had nothing else to ask me, then he needed to go about his way. What do you know? He sticks next to me, beginning to ask me even more personal questions. Questions such as if I have a boyfriend, where I live, what school I attend, etc. Well, I guess you don't have to use the restroom, do you, buddy? Is this the way you go about picking up college girls? Because it's still not working. I barked back at him, clearly ignoring my customer service training. The creep suddenly changed his demeanor and began to curse at me, telling me that I should go out with him and that no other guy is better. He even stated that he always gets his way and those who don't listen to him or follow his directions have bad things happen to them. I ignored those statements, clearly starting to get a bit freaked out and start to make my way back to the front of the store where more customers and my co-workers are located. The man followed me and then proceeded to grab me. At this point, it was all game. I slapped him right in the face and he lets go of me for a brief moment. However, the look in his eyes was what said it all. I had awoken a beast. He tries to grab me again, but a couple of customers happen to notice what's happening and get involved. This man starts a fight with the customers, but one of the customers, who I found out was a marine, manages to put the guy in a pretty nifty arm hold, giving enough time for us to call the police, who luckily are just located across the street. When the police arrived, they end up questioning the man, who puts up a bit of a fight. But finally, when all was said and done, they put him in handcuffs and take him away. Everyone in the store started clapping and cheering as the officers and the creep exited the store. Even the marine got recognized and everyone in the store gave him a thumbs up and a good job compliment. That was it for that night. I ended up going back home, a bit shaken up and on the edge. But I was happy that I had such lovely customers and officers who came to my rescue. He snuck into my home. Hey there, foxy friend. I want to share something with you that happened to me this past July. For some context, I'm female, 18 years old. Now, before the lockdowns of 2020, I used to be on my school swimming team. This meant I normally spent a few hours after school training and exercising. Due to what's happening, and school being cancelled this past spring, I was forced to swim in my own pool at home to keep in shape. By the way, our school team is still on hiatus as of this writing of October 2020. In any case, this one afternoon in July, my parents were out doing some grocery shopping 
and I just stepped out of the pool after doing a workout. I went into the shower, which has a little window that overlooks my backyard and the swimming pool, and spent the next bit enjoying the warm water and, funny enough, listening to one of your videos. Fast forward about 20 to 30 minutes later, I looked out the little window and just barely saw the outline of a figure walking toward the back kitchen glass sliding door. Due to the angle, the roof, the steam covering most of the glass, and the height, I couldn't get a good look at them. However, because I'm naive, I didn't really focus too much attention toward this discovery. I live in a very safe community, and home break-ins and burglars are basically unheard of. Besides, the only people who could get into my home would be my parents, since they have the keys. Anyways, a few minutes after that sight, I step out of the shower and walk like five seconds across the second floor hallway and into my parents' room. The reason why is because my mom has this huge mirror I like to use, and plus the one in the restroom was all foggy from the steam. It's at this point I notice something a bit off. I saw through my parents' window, which overlooks the front yard and the driveway, my parents just pulling in. But what was strange was that I could hear footsteps and movement in my home. Now, I do have an older brother who lives with me, but he works all day, and his car wasn't parked in the driveway. Here's an alarm bells finally began to ring in my head, and my naive mindset would forever change. I grab the revolver my dad keeps in the nightstand as I kick the door down and start to make my way toward where I can hear the noise. Yes, I do realize this was extremely reckless and dangerous, since I had no idea if whoever was in my home was armed or not, but my adrenaline had taken over. Not even halfway down the steps, I see someone with a large knife in their right hand, about to make their way up to me. Drop the knife and do as I say. The 40-something-year-old looking man with a receding hairline, glasses, a mechanic jumpsuit, a medical mask, and a duffel bag where I could see our Blu-ray player peeking out of the zipper, stops in place before doing exactly what I told him. He drops the knife in the duffel bag, and like a kid caught in a lie, he starts to give me excuses, saying he was with the power company and needed to unplug all the electronics in the house then stops halfway through his explanation, realizing what a terrible story he was telling. I tell him to leave, and just as he's about to run into the kitchen, the front door opens, revealing my mom and dad holding groceries. You can imagine their reaction seeing their daughter in a bathrobe about to go call a duty on this home intruder, as my brother later referred to it. The man quickly runs into the kitchen, and my dad follows him but sadly doesn't catch him since he exits through the back door and then jumps over our backyard fence. Moments later, we hear the sound of a car engine and then just catch the glimpse of a black SUV driving down the back alleyway behind our home and disappearing. We immediately call the police who then do a search of the surrounding neighborhoods, but unfortunately to this day, they have never caught him. Now, due to my overconfidence in nothing going wrong, I had accidentally left the back door unlocked, meaning this random creep happened to make his way in and then started to ransack my home. Too bad for him, I was home. And thank goodness he made it out in one piece, because if it wasn't for me and my hesitation, I would have turned him into Swiss cheese. So, a note to people out there. Please, don't go into people's homes without permission. Also, yes, you don't need to tell me. Learn to lock the doors. I get it. We have since changed all the locks on the doors and even got a security system set up. By the way, completely unrelated, but I really enjoyed the animation you put out the other week on your channel, the Halloween video. I'm not really a fan of anime to be honest, but wow, I'll say, what an incredible job you and your team did. Honestly, I can't wait to see what other anime stuff you got in the works because I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Definitely, a must watch, if you're a fan of the Creepy Fox. Photo shoot gone wrong. This happened a few months ago, 
and is still one of the creepier incidents I have ever been through. I just started working at a grocery store and got to know all my co-workers fairly well. One co-worker in particular, who we're going to call Natalie, is a photographer and does photo shoots for clientele as a side hustle. When she mentioned this during one of her breaks, I asked her if she could help me take some pictures because I wanted to have some new content for my Instagram page. I'm a musician on the side and play music a lot, but unfortunately the photographer I was working with had moved across the country, so this was a perfect fit. So one weekend when both of us had the day off, we decided to go to this trail that's about a 10 minute drive from my home. In total it's about 4-5 to five miles. And at the one mile mark it branches off into a little set of woods. There was one spot I had in mind which had a beautiful field of flowers that many people in my area like to take pictures at. Side note, before you jump to conclusions, I'm not the kind of person who actually steps into the flower fields and tramples over said flowers. I stick to the trail and have the flowers as a backdrop. I'm looking at you, poppy flower tramplers. Anyways, we got there fairly early, 6.30am as the sun was beginning to rise across the horizon and spent the next 10 to 15 minutes taking photos in different spots and angles. After we got the necessary photos, we took a seat on a log and had some coffee and muffins we had packed in our bags. Not even two minutes later, my friend and I start hearing rustling of leaves and branches. Now this trail is pretty busy during the mornings, and we had seen some runners pass by, so we assumed that's what it was, since our back was turned to the noise. But then all of a sudden we hear this really creepy voice that calls out to Natalie and I. Hey, what are you two doing out here? We turned around and see this disheveled 30-something year old man with ragged clothing and what appears to be like a bottle of alcohol. We assumed so since he had it in a brown paper bag. It doesn't take a genius to realize why people do that. We start getting a really bad feeling as he starts stumbling closer, so we grab our things and start to walk away. However, he's following us, saying the most incoherent and random things we had ever heard. It was really weird, but it got worse when my friend turned around and then let out a loud scream. What's wrong? I said, only for her to grab my arm and yell one simple word, run. I was confused until I looked back myself and saw that the man now has a knife. I remember my face going as pale as a ghost when we see he starts to chase us like a madman, telling us that if we don't stop, things were going to end up worse. After about 10 to 15 seconds of running, we see a group of people with what appear to be like some large dogs. As we got closer, we notice they're German shepherds, and they begin barking. Help us! There's a guy with a knife! The three people, two men and one female, immediately stop in place, as the two large men, along with the German shepherds, get in front of Natalie and I, dogs bearing teeth, and looking as if they're about to chow down onto some juicy steaks. When my friend and I look back, we see the creepy man do a complete 180 before he starts stumbling back the way he came from. Natalie and I finally got a breath of relief, but sadly for Natalie, she was having a panic attack, not that I could really put a blame on her. Luckily, after a few minutes, she was able to settle as the group escorted us back to my car. We did call the police, but unfortunately, they never found the guy. At least not until a few days later, which we heard about from a friend that lives in the area. Since that incident, I've avoided going to trails and woods, but I have been told by my friends I shouldn't let some creep ruin the wilderness for the rest of my life. They have a point, which is why I now carry a taser along with pepper spray that my boyfriend recently bought me. Never expected this to happen. This is the second time I've shared a story on the Creepy Fox YouTube channel. The first time I did was all the way back in the summer of 2017. Yes, I am one of your OG fans, and proud of it. This occurred in July of 2020. For some background, I'm female, 21 years old, and I work at a video game store as a part-time job. I absolutely love it. 
It's ten times better than the job I had at McDonald's, which back when I submitted my first story, I was working there on the weekends. I don't miss coming home with the smell of french fries on my uniform whatsoever. Anyways, it was approaching closing time, 9pm on a Friday, and it's just me at the register and my manager who was in the back room working on some paperwork. I was beginning to clean up and close the store when two men entered the store wearing medical masks. One of them had a medium sized duffel bag over their shoulder, sort of a weird sight. But either way, I advised them that we would be closing soon. The men ended up ignoring me and just started walking around, minding their own business. Whatever I thought. Sometimes customers just want to go about their window shopping without being disturbed. However, something about the way they were dressed and the way they were acting had me a bit on the edge. At any rate, I continued to do some picking up and cleaning for another 5-7 to seven minutes. And then I noticed that the men have now moved to the back corner of the store, which I could see through the security camera, but not with my own eyes. They appear to be whispering something to each other, and I even noticed them continuing to look out the front window, almost as if they are paranoid about something. I found this a bit strange, but I soon lose track of them when my manager comes over and told me it's time to close the store. I advise him about the two men and he tells me he would go take care of it and not to worry. As soon as my manager walks away from me and heads down an aisle of video games, the men shout at my manager and they tell him to back up. I was confused. They were silent just a minute ago. So what was with the sudden uproar? I got my answer. The men were armed with semi-automatic pistols. I let out a loud yelp sound as my manager who bless his heart is as chill as a penguin, tells the men that he'll do as they say, but to allow me to leave the store. That was a hard no. Under their masks, they instructed for both me and my manager to remain quiet and not to make any sort of sudden movements. The one with the duffel bag starts to put video games and other merchandise into their carry-on. Meanwhile, the second man walks over to the cash register and advises me to empty what's in there. It was approximately $1,200 in cash. We hand it over in a plastic bag, and the man takes it, joining his accomplice seconds later. The men booked it out of the front door just as quickly as they had arrived, and here's the point I couldn't hold it in anymore. I broke down and started crying profusely. Meanwhile, my manager goes through the front door to ensure it's locked, and that they can't get back in. We then walked into the back room and we go on lockdown as my manager contacted the police department. Four officers showed up to our store less than 10 minutes later and we gave them our statements. The officers reviewed the security footage and they launched an immediate investigation into the robbery. But as of today, the police still haven't caught those two, which is super scary. As for the video games, they haven't been found either. The total cost of the games? Somewhere between $2,500 to $3,000. Thankfully, the owner's insurance policy was able to cover them. By the way, I'm still working there, although I have now switched from working at night to the mornings. The owner has also hired an armed security guard, so we feel a lot more safe. Lurking in the Lonely Building Myself and some friends went to an abandoned mental asylum during the evening, not really expecting much to happen. We got in through one of the boarded up windows, and when we were inside, we suddenly heard talking. We figured other people were here, so like the curious individuals we are, we followed the sound. We're now walking down a hallway, and we hear what sounds like a woman whispering, why did you take my baby? Over and over again. At this point, I'm visibly shaking, and we all believed we found where the sound was coming from. We got into this room, and there was a huge cage. Honestly, it looked like one of those pet carriers, but human-sized. Anyways, as we slowly backed up, 
having our backs turned toward the door we entered from. One of my friends gets pushed from behind and into one of the cages next to the wall. I forgot to mention, but I had a small Swiss army knife with me. Not much, but before I could pull it out of my pocket, I too was pushed into a cage next to my friend. I then watched in complete fear as the last friend gets pushed into a cage and I see who's responsible. Two men in black ski masks. Now, thank the heavens above, but luckily a police officer had seen us walk into the building who managed to catch up to us and arrest the two in the black ski masks and save us too. I truly believe if that police officer had not shown up when he did, we aren't sure what would have happened. And that idea still gives us nightmares, even today. She was in my home. This is a comment of a story that was left on one of my older YouTube videos by an awesome subscriber of mine named Haunted Girl. Thanks for sharing your story. And without further ado, here's what she had to say. Hey there, you creepy little fox. Hearing these stories made me remember the time when we were having a pretty big party out back in my parents' home. It was a graduation party for me. I graduated and just barely passed my nursing boards. We had a large ranch-style home with about an acre of flat backyard. The front door was open since people could walk into the entryway and then walk straight into the dining room. We had a window in the dining room that you could see out to the backyard. The guests would then turn right into the kitchen and then step out into the family room and out to the backyard. In any case, it was broad daylight as I was walking around and talking to everyone and thanking them for coming. I was talking to some people who were sitting near the dining room window, and all of a sudden, I saw the curtain move. And just a few seconds later, I see a young woman looking at me from my window. I had no idea who she was, so I immediately called for my dad. My dad ends up running in through the back door and into the kitchen where you can see that window. However, no one was there. My dad then heard the front door close. He runs over to check it out, but the woman who was in there was already across the street, away from my home. At this point, my dad began yelling, getting to the middle of the yard, before realizing she's not coming back. We did end up calling the police, who got back to us about three days later, because she had pulled the same stunt at another home the next day. However, she got caught in the house because someone came in the back and a guest was coming in through the front, so she was trapped. From what we were told, she was on some sort of substances. So that's the story that Haunted Girl shared with me. What do you guys think? Was it possible this mysterious woman had other intentions? And if not, how scary is it knowing that anyone could just walk into your home without you even knowing it. And that idea is just pure nightmare fuel. They were watching from the woods. Okay, so myself, my son, and my mom went for a drive one evening and had stopped at this part on the highway that has a glacier running down the mountainside. It's truly breathtaking and beautiful. Anyways, all was good. We were talking, sitting there having some RBs and enjoying the peace and quiet, but suddenly we started to hear something coming from the woods. Now, I've hunted before, so I'm very familiar with different noises animals make. This sounded like no animal I'd ever heard. Therefore, I took out my phone and used this app which, when having access to your microphone, can help identify various noises. It gives me mountain lion and I start relaxing knowing we didn't just stumble into some scary unknown creature who would come out of nowhere and eat us up for dinner. Back to the food. I had my hand resting out the window as I took a bite out of some curly fries, and then I felt something lick my hands. Naturally, I was startled. I retreat my arm and turn the flashlight on my phone. What I saw was super freaky. Instead of a mountain lion, a bear, or a wolf, or some other furry creature, it was a woman. Yeah, no kidding. Here in the middle of nowhere, with a ripped up bikini top and bottoms that were ripped to shreds. I then flashed the light into the nearby woods thinking I had seen something, 
and what we see is even more disturbing. Four other people in dark hoodies. I knew at this very moment that this was some sort of setup, but I don't think these freaks knew who the occupants in the car were, that being me, my son, and my mom. Now, I did have bear mace, and I was going to use it, but instead we pulled out of there and went to a nearby gas station. While I talked to the clerk, I brought up the creepy incident. He ended up pausing for a brief moment, and I pressed him to give me more answers, since I noticed he knew more than he let on to believe. I was told that area used to house a hospital that was built back in the 1700s, but closed around 1945. Apparently, it was being used by a family who would set up muggings and there was a woman who would go up to people's cars and try to get them to get out. She would then lead them into the nearby forest where her accomplices were waiting. Now why she licked my hands, I don't really know. But needless to say, we never went back there again. He stormed into the laundromat. I remembered this story after listening to one of the videos you uploaded a couple of weeks ago. To remind everyone, it was the story about the woman who was part of a police chase. She wasn't actually the one they were after, but while at a Domino's Pizza, the man who led the officers on that chase stormed into the Domino's. My experience is sort of similar. This was a few years ago, and I was doing some laundry at my apartment's laundromat. For quick context, I'm female, 34 years old, and a mother of two. It was around 1 p.m., and I wanted to get this done before I would leave the house at 2.45 so I could go pick up my kids from their elementary school. The laundromat had two other people, and I was next to the entrance, since that's where the newer and fancier machines were located. After about 20 minutes of standing around, listening to music, playing over the radio, I started to notice something. A loud noise. Helicopters, to be exact. I was intrigued, so I looked outside through the window, and I could see a helicopter flying in the same circle over and over again. Now, the area I live in is somewhat notorious for crime, but it's usually limited to petty things such as shoplifting or breaking into cars. The only time something serious happened was about 15 years ago. Anyways, I continued to wash the clothes, now transitioning to the drying machines. That's when I could hear a bunch of police sirens. Once again, I looked out the window and into the parking area just behind the laundromat, and I saw about 10 police cars with their lights flashing red and blue. Running in my direction was a man in a hoodie, with officers right behind him. Now, before I have a chance to react, as I was so caught up in the moment, the man runs into the laundromat, and myself and one other person have this awkward five-second stare down with him. I wasn't sure if he was going to grab one of us, or if he was going to continue to run. But this hesitation was enough time for the police to catch up to him. The man then proceeded to lay on the floor, as an officer then led me and another person out of the laundromat. Officers soon went for the arrest. Fast forward about 10 minutes later, after talking with the police, and there's a bunch of news reporters asking me a bunch of questions. They asked if I could do an interview, but I had to go and pick up my kids, so I told them no. Later that evening, I learned this man they were after was armed and dangerous, and had robbed a 7-Eleven gas station a few cities over, where they chased him until he drove into our apartments. I know my experience is like the one I heard a few weeks ago, and that I didn't encounter a stalker or some creepy person, but I thought you would like to include it anyways, since it's something different. Making my way to my car, but then... I was introduced to your channel just a few days ago by a friend of mine, and he told me I should share my scary encounter I had earlier this year. So... Here it is. For some context, I'm female, 25 years old, and I work at a coffee shop in Northern California. This was in January, and I was in charge of closing the store. My other two co-workers had left 20 minutes earlier, meaning it's just me and the night. 
Now, normally I parked at the front of our shop, as there are spaces that are specifically reserved for the employees. However, the city was doing some renovations, and our parking lot, or should I say, parking spaces, were currently waiting for the asphalt to dry, which meant no parking. Kind of annoying since we had to park either across the street or behind the coffee shop in the alleyway. You can imagine everyone chose to park behind the building since everyone including me was too lazy to cross the street. Little did I know, this was where I would have a scary encounter like none other. So I exited the coffee shop at roughly 10.15pm through the back door, which is in the kitchen, and just as expected I can see it's dark and empty. I remember hearing the light above me flickering on and off as moths flew around the illumination, giving a sort of peaceful and relaxed atmosphere. I start making my way to my car, passing a couple of dumpsters, when I suddenly heard leaves crunching. I remember stopping in place and almost having a full-on panic attack, but then I reminded myself it was probably a cat or other little furry creature, since we do get them visiting every now and then. But then, I heard somebody clear their throat, and I got the chills. Hey you, give me your purse and your phone if you have one. I turn back and that's when I can see him. There's a homeless man in a hoodie, slowly inching his way closer to me with a box cutter. I didn't immediately reach for my purse, where I had some pepper spray. I guess I was in shock. And he stepped closer, yelling at me to do as he said. Those fierce eyes, let me just say, were a whole story. It's almost as if he was in a completely different mindset, something you might witness with a villain in a scary movie. Either way, I finally snapped out of it when he's inches away from me, and I start running in the opposite direction. I can hear him chasing me, and I'm starting to cry, thinking what in the world did I do to deserve something like this? When I reach the end of the alleyway, screaming like I'd just seen a ghost, a man who was walking his golden retriever stumbles into me and then starts asking what's wrong. I don't even get a single word out. Instead, I point behind me, where I could see the homeless man just standing in the middle of the alley, putting the box cutter back into his pocket. We both witnessed, as the homeless man then turned the other way, and then disappears behind the building. My a lifesaver. I gave him a TLDR of what just happened, and this nice man walks me across the street to a gas station, where I called the non-emergency police number. They sent a couple of officers within minutes, and one of them walked me back to my vehicle, where I safely made it back to my apartment. I don't think they ever found him since I never got a call back, nor have any of my co-workers seen someone that matches my description. I now work in the morning exclusively, and I haven't had anything as creepy as that happen to me again. The Abandoned Tunnels a couple of years ago, myself and some friends had really been interested in adventuring and exploring. I used to live in Southern California, and one thing that had always been interesting for me were these abandoned tunnels my dad had told me about. He said when he was younger, his school actually took him there with his classmates. That was about 40 years ago. Now the area is sealed off. It was a shame. I wanted to learn more about it and its history. That's why I tried looking up more information about the underground tunnels online, and I did find a few things. I learned there were various underground tunnels underneath the streets of my city, which were in service during the 1960s and mid-1970s. They mainly led to other buildings and areas which were used by city workers, but like I mentioned, they're closed off. A real shame. We had heard about some other tunnels that people had explored before. I guess they would have to do for now. So on a random afternoon, myself and some friends get on our bicycles and go out into the woods. We had always seen these water tunnels towards the end of the woods, and we always did find them interesting. We never actually went in there, but since we had heard all these stories and were so excited, we got the courage to go check them out. And this time we came prepared. We brought a couple of knives and some flashlights. Immediately you could tell just how quiet it was down there. You could hear your own echo something myself and my friends enjoyed. We did see the normal graffiti and writing, and some leftover debris and obviously water. As we're walking further into the tunnel, it's getting dark. 
Soon enough, we make our way around a bend, and it's completely dark, as in, you can't see anything. But that's what the flashlights were for. One thing we did do, which I think ultimately helped us, is that we brought some tape. Using the tape, we made arrows that pointed to the outside. This way, if we got lost or anything, we could follow them out. So we put up our first bits of tape and continued to walk. Eventually, we reached a little crossroad. Here was where we found two tunnels. One led one way, the other went somewhere else. Honestly, we should have just turned around at that point. A curiosity was really calling us. We placed another arrow and continued. Soon, we reach another tunnel, and another. By now, we've been in here for over 30 minutes, and we decide it's time to go back. As we're doing so, of course the batteries on our flashlights start to give out. I guess that's what we get, don't we? We resorted to using our cell phone's flashlights. We find our arrows just fine, but towards the last few minutes, we start hearing an echo of voices. We stood there frozen, thinking it was one of us who said something. Instead, we each turn around, realizing we had said nothing. As our flashlights shine deeper into the tunnel, we end up seeing something absolutely frightening. A man in a hoodie, and he's holding one of the largest knives we had ever seen. We take off running, being chased by this maniac, and when we reach the entrance of the tunnel and get on our bicycles, the man just stands there at the entrance and stares us down with menacing eyes. We booked it out of there so fast that we didn't stop until we reached my friend's house, which was a couple of miles away. We later found out that there are some homeless people that will hang out in the area, and it just so happened that we stumbled into one. From that moment on, we no longer go inside tunnels. Instead, we choose to go camping and exploring with family instead. Man in the Elevator This story happened to me when I was on summer vacation. If I remember correctly, this was two years ago. I was with my friend's family and they invited me to go along with them to a resort right by the ocean. This was the first time I'd ever done something like this, so you can imagine my surprise and joy when they told me about it. The resort featured everything you could imagine. Swimming pools, the beach, spas, buffets, room service, the entire thing. The first night we arrived, we go to the rooms and get some sleep after a long plane ride. The next morning, we get on a shuttle with another group of vacationers and spent the entire day in the nearby town, visiting nearby landmarks, going to the local shops, and even taking pictures with some of the animals we saw. All in all, a great time. Fast forward to 7 p.m., and it's starting to get late. We all now take the 30-minute shuttle that takes us back to the hotel. And on the way over there, I had become aware of a man who hadn't been with our group when we first arrived in town. At first, I was thinking that maybe he was an employee of the hotel, but I hadn't seen him in a uniform like the rest of the staff wore. Eventually, we arrived and everyone goes their own way. By now, myself and my friend Maria had distracted ourselves and forgot about the stranger that joined us. Maria's parents were pretty tired, and they decided they wanted to go straight to the room. However, myself and Maria wanted to get some food before we went back up to the room, and her parents agreed, but they told us not to get back too late. We end up going to the VIP area and getting some snacks and start heading over to the elevators. Feeling happy, we're waiting for them to open. As soon as they do, the elevator opens and we see that same man from the shuttle start to exit. I don't think he noticed us, but then he did a quick turnaround and gets back into the elevator. Great. We were now here with this stranger. In that very moment, I knew this was bad news. Remember, here we are in a place we've never been to before and we don't know the area too well, let alone anyone that worked there. The entire time we were in the elevator, he had his hands behind his back, almost as if he was hiding something. You can imagine how nervous we became. We had already pressed the button to go to our floor, but he hadn't pressed a button yet, so either he was going to the same floor, or something else was going on here. The elevator actually opened on the fifth floor, two floors before ours, 
so we take the opportunity to run out. He now starts running after us as we make our way down the empty corridor. We look back, and that's when we see something that gives us the chills. We see he's got a pocket knife. Immediately, Maria and I start screaming, and as we turn the corner of this hallway, we see a group of people. They were obviously surprised to see how nervous we were and why we were screaming. As we wait there in anticipation of him to turn the corner, he doesn't arrive. As we wait with this group, we just so happen to see a security guard. Quickly, we walk up to him and explain what had happened. He then got on his radio, and he told the main office there was a man with a knife in the hotel, and that they needed to get police here right away. Unfortunately, they never did find him. And that really scares me, and keeps me up at night. Abandoned Cabin Wolves This happened about a month ago. I'm currently 20 years old, and I was on summer break. Since I was studying abroad, I didn't want to go all the way home. I really enjoyed where I was staying, and so I spent the summer vacation with my new friends I had met. We did a lot of cool things, but something we wanted to do was go on a small little road trip of sorts. We had always heard about this area up in the mountains that was supposed to have old abandoned homes and buildings. We were pretty interested. So on a random Tuesday afternoon, we made a two-hour drive up into those mountains. There were multiple roads up there. You had the obvious ones that you could follow that took you to populated towns and vacation homes. But at the same time, you also had the unmarked roads. These roads were the ones that took you further into the wilderness. One of these roads, I remember, was closed off by a barrier that you could move out of the way. And that's exactly what we did. We moved the barrier and then continued the drive down this lonesome road. There was something about going down this road, however, that really added to the overall tone of our adventure. The trees looked old, the road itself was damaged, and you didn't really see any signs of life out here. When we reached an opening, we were pretty disappointed with what we saw. We honestly expected to find this hidden little gem of a town, but instead it was more like a large cabin with two other small little buildings next to it. I guess the rumors didn't live up to the stories. Still, it was neat to see something so lonesome out here in the middle of nowhere. You could tell how old it was because the nature around was slowly starting to take over. There was also very little of the roof left, and even some of the walls of the cabin looked damaged. As we pulled up into the little driveway area, we saw a sign that was on the ground. I'm guessing at some point it was up, but it must have fallen over with the wind some time ago. The sign read, Danger, No Trespassing. I guess it was due to the condition of the home. Regardless, we got out of our vehicle and started to have a peek around. So far, we hadn't seen anything out of the ordinary. A couple of minutes of walking, we make our way to one of the small little buildings. I say little buildings, but they were more like little small sheds. Inside, we found a few tools you would see for working outdoors as well as various other things like scraps and newspaper. Nothing too interesting just yet. At this point, I wanted to grab my camera from the car, so I head over and my friend Allison walks over to the main cabin, which we still haven't explored. I didn't really see what happened next, but soon I hear the sound of yelling, followed by my friend Allison running back to the car, screaming. I was confused. Maybe she fell or hurt herself or something? No, that wasn't it. Instead, I see what's following her. No, it wasn't a person like you normally hear in these sorts of scary encounters. But instead, it was two wolves. Yeah, and they looked really angry. I guess they ended up making this their home since nobody lived here anymore. How they didn't hear us when we had first arrived, I wasn't sure. Those wolves were so fast, and they almost caught up to Allison. At this point, I was already in the car and I'm begging Allison to hurry. I remember opening the passenger side door and Allison jumping right in as they are nearly inches away from her back. The wolves then began to circle the vehicle and start scratching at the doors. Sadly, in all the commotion, Allison had dropped her camera in front of the cabin 
And one thing was for sure. With these two out there, we weren't going to step outside and go get it. We ended up leaving the camera behind in the woods. And we got out of there real quick. We haven't been back there since. So I guess in the end, those two wolves ended up with a free camera. Hey friends, before we reach the end of the video, I actually have a couple of bonus stories for you all. And just like the other stories, these are experiences that were sent in to me by subscribers, but I haven't had a chance to feature them yet in a video, mainly because I haven't found a theme or a topic that goes with them. So yeah, consider them bonus stories. It's two stories in total for about six or so minutes. After that, we've got the outro for the video, so I'll see you guys there. Howling of the Woods Growing up, my dad had a career that often had us traveling all around the country during the summer. We made lots of new friends and enjoyed the new sights and the feeling of adventure. One evening, while we were at a campground along with a couple of other families that we were friends with, a group of about 10 of us kids decided to play tag. Naturally, it was dark out and we all ranged in age from about 7 to 13 years old, so we were a little bit jumpy. We were just getting started when we heard a strange howling noise. Suddenly, my brother runs out from behind some bushes where he had been hiding, and he's white as a ghost. He started yelling at us to run, so we didn't ask any questions and took off toward our campsite. Once we got back to the campsite, my brother finally calmed down enough to tell us that while he was hiding behind some bushes, he had heard growling, howling sounds. My brother peeked around the bushes behind him and saw what he described as the biggest dog he'd ever seen and that he thought it started to chase him. We were all worried now that there was this giant mutant dog of sorts prowling around our campsite, so we told some of the adults. One of the adults, let's call him John, was a pretty large muscular guy who gave off the impression that nothing could scare him. John ended up grabbing a baseball bat for protection and had us show him where we were when we had seen the large dog. There were a lot of little kids around our campsite and he wanted to try and find the owner so we could tell him to properly leash the dog. Well, we creeped back to the area where we were playing tag, scared of every tiny little noise we heard. My brother tiptoes up to some bushes and points behind them, indicating for John to peep behind the bushes to see where he saw the growling dog. John sneaks over, peeks behind the bushes while crouched down with the baseball bat at hand, and then immediately stands up and turns around to give us a look of, really? There was no dog. It was a fire hydrant. John yelled back, laughing. Well... It turns out my brother had seen a fire hydrant, and the shadows playing across the surface made it look like it was moving, so that coupled with the growling and the howling we heard made him think a dog was after him. We all took a peek at the fire hydrant, and of course took turns teasing my brother about it. Not really a scary story per se, but we were scared when we thought a giant dog was chasing after us. We still never found out what made the growling and the howling sound that we all heard though. So I ask, what do you guys think it could have been? The Raven Man Hello creepy fox. So before I tell you my story, I just wanted to tell you how I came across your channel. When the lockdown started here in Canada with all the restrictions and safety protocols, I found myself looking for ways to keep busy. So I listened to the Witcher series on audiobook via YouTube. After that I started listening to Japanese urban legends. That led me to Yandere stories. And finally to many different pages including yours. What I like about your channel is you do things differently. You actually retell people's real life experiences. So here I am to tell you about mine. For privacy let's call myself Jay. This story takes place when I was in grade 6 with two of my friends who were going to call H and E. Anyways, the school I attended was on a landmass enough to build three other schools. First you had the school, and then you had three massive fields in a long row. The first field was used for soccer, and the second was used for baseball and other sports. 
Finally, the last field off to the distance was hardly used, and we weren't allowed to go there during recess. By the way, I'm male. Anyways, me and my friends decided to go to the far end of the field one lunch hour and look at the side of the stairway, which gave us a perfect downhill view for at least five blocks leading to one of the main roads. This is when things got weird. We saw a man two blocks down walking towards our school, but we didn't think anything of it and continued to admire the view. But then we noticed the man was now looking right at us without even blinking and walking toward the stairs. This is how he looked. A fisherman jacket and hat, old cargo pants, and dusty shoes, but his eyes stood out the most. They never blinked. He walked towards us, and we decided to retreat back to the border of the third and the second field. This was when we looked back to see him still walking the same way, with his unblinking and unexpressive face. We decided to run, and we didn't look back until we got to the middle of the first field. And when we did, we saw him stare at us for a few minutes before he left. We decided to go back to the third field entrance and look and saw him where we first saw him two blocks down, but this time he was heading away. The next day, we went to the same spot where he was standing, and we found something random. A raven feather. My friend called him the Raven Man. This was back in 2001, by the way. I didn't think about the memory until listening to all these stories. I know this isn't really what you would call a scary story, but I wanted to submit it anyways and have the creepy fox feature it in one of his videos. So if this makes it, I just want to say thank you. And I hope all of you have a nice day.